said, dang, he out here surmising and shit. You know, I have to make sure I look good for whoever sees me, okay? Period. That part. <laughs> My name is Ty Cole here with Your Voice Media, and today I'm talking to Kendall Kendall, okay? Yes. Your best friend in your head. <laughs> I want to say, um, Kendall, that for me, you are like a best friend in my head. Like when I see you, how you interact, the jokes, just like your playfulness, mm -hmm. even from when I met you on the carpet, it really just gives like a fun, vibrant energy like myself. Yeah. So I want to just say we friends, baby, in my Listen, head. I'm, I'm whoever friend we need to be. We, we need to be friends. Okay. Friends. okay. We could be best friends, but <laughs> there are no friends in games people play. Now, what do you think is the biggest game played this season? The biggest game played this season? Probably. Mm. So I'll let y'all know this. Some of y'all probably already know, so I'm sure you do. But <laughs> that secret society, ooh, I think that's right. the biggest game because that's it's you know think of it as the Illuminati. You know what I mean? <laughs> but you know we calling it the foundation. So MJ taps into um, that, and I think Illuminati. Yeah, he's tapping into that foundation. That's a big game right there. He messing with his life and everybody else's life is in danger. Yeah. So with that, especially with like this new season, that storyline, that clearly means that MJ is having a bigger role. So how will we ex see MJ expand this season? Because we saw him a little bit in season mm -hmm. one, but in season two, he kind of, he kind of gets some stuff into some things. Yeah. So how does he expand? So, you know, last season, MJ was in and out, you know, he get, hit you with a punchline. He had helped me out. And, you know, mm. he was taking over. She ain't let him do shit. This season, right. he doing it his damn self. And if it means he... <laughs> I got to be careful when I say... Look, look we best if, friends. We chat. I'll say it like this. So if that means he has to, <laughs> you know, put his friendships on the line, oh. he, he might do it. And, so uh, we're going to get a little bit of backstab a little bit this season. Yeah, you're probably going to get a little backstab. The loyalty might not be there. It's going to be some lies. And mm -hmm. um, you really get to see who MJ is because you, you know, I got an apartment. <laughs> it's lit. <laughs> I'm not going to loft. So you okay. really And then, oh, Lord Jesus. I ain't telling y'all. I'm going to let y'all see the rest. No, no, Kendall, you can't uh -uh. start off and not no. finish. Mm -mm. Y'all, let's see. Ooh, okay, we won't have to tune in. Yeah, y'all gotta tune in. So let me ask you this question. So let's say Kendall Kendall happened to find a secret society. Are you gonna report back and let us know what you see, or are you gonna keep it to yourself? First of all, I'm gonna keep it to myself. I ain't doing I'm, I'm not even gonna jump to a secret society. Let's just start there. But if it just happened to happen, mm -hmm. I don't know what y'all talk about. <laughs> right you ain't hear nothing that's what my mama always said you yeah. hear nothing you see nothing you'll know nothing yeah. i ain't seen jack I as what Pam would say okay i don't even know what you're talking about <laughs> now while that's a crazy vibe what's the vibe on set like you know especially post pandemic you guys are all together is it playful is it fun are we calm on set like what's the vibe if someone were to walk on the games people play set we play too many games. We play too damn much. <laughs> okay. Um, we love each other. When on set, the vibe on set is family. Um, the energy is good, especially when it comes to the cast, because we all we all fuck with each other. Excuse me, I don't know okay. if I can say that, but we all mess with each one. other. Okay. Um, okay. E News or VC, you could you could do your thing. <laughs> yeah, we all friends, and then we all are friends. We have we friends together, and then we all have our own relationships with each other, like separately, okay. and um. After we all go hang out, like you know what I mean, we go eat. Whether it's my house, a lot of times it was my house because of COVID. So it was like right. we came over here, we had to drink, we had. To and you be cooking, cause I be seeing you chefing it up. I be cooking, but when I was here, when we had it here, Karuchi was cooking. So, oh, for real? What yeah. she made? She always makes her shrimp tacos, which is bomb. Okay. Um, so she make her shrimp tacos. I provide mm. the drinks, you know. <laughs> okay, mix up. Like he will bring um, dessert. He always will bring some tips, treats. So yeah, it was a vibe. And then okay, we, so we when y'all have this, Kendall, I want my in because I want my shrimp taco. So wait a minute, you in Atlanta? No, I'm in New York. 
Oh, child. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think yeah, you would have. <laughs> it ain't far but a plane ride, baby. I will it come. It, it's closer than LA. So Okay. It's closer yeah. than LA. So I will yeah. come. Season three, we got you. Season three, I want my shrimp. Now, speaking <laughs> of Karuchi, now she is introduced this season and she's joining the cast. Now, how was the welcoming your new cast member and what was the reaction on set? Um, like she was always there. And then, you know, I knew Karuchi before Dance People Play from Claws. Right. And then from Claws, we kept in touch and then living in LA. So for me, it was like, oh, my home here. Everybody else, um, like Karen kind of fangirl a little bit. She was like, oh my God, this is so crazy. She was like, I took a picture with you. And she showed her like, girl, we took a picture like a couple years ago. And oh, I, I love that. Up. So it was just really, we cool and down to earth. And then Jackie okay. just, everybody's homeboy and everybody's cousin, brother, uncle, whatever you need him to be. As much as he played, Jackie is that one that do, he keep people together. Um, Sharonis is just easy going. Parker Hurt, same thing, easy going. It wasn't no like, oh, here she comes. Right. What y'all think she gonna do? And then she is the homie too. Like Karuchi, her, the way she came and she said, hey y'all, you know, it's all of it that. It seemed so like a fun vibe. And we put her in a group before we even met. We put her in our group chat before okay. we even met and did any table reads. So everybody was like, cause I think her and Sharonis. familiar with her. Yeah, her and Sharonis went to lunch. And then he was like, yo, I'm putting Karuchi in the group chat. So everybody was like, yo, what's up? So when we got there, every, it was lit. It was just like, we knew each other. I love that. Now, yeah. someone else who's joining the cast as well is Leon. He joins the cast as Sharonis' father, and they share a pretty intimate father-son moment on screen in one of the episodes. Now, for Black men, how important do you think it is to show vulnerability on television, especially in today's time? Uh, I think it's very important because, you know, I don't know about you, but growing up, you know, fathers don't show like vulnerability. They don't show. It'd be like love you this or much. you know. Yeah, it'd be like that much. Like they punch you in the arm is like I love you. Yeah, Ugh. or like my dad, he liked to play fight. That was I love you. It wasn't like no, I love you. I watch the Val with his boys, the Val and Kadeem. I watch him with his boys. He stopped them all the time. If I'm over there, he stopped them. They walk past. He grab them. He pick them up. He hug them. He kiss them. That's how I love yeah. you. Today. They, they see that, they feel that. I didn't feel it. So I think it's very important. And I'm glad that, you know, we'll get to see that this season. I love that. Now, lies and loyalty is a tagline for this season. How do you deal with lies that are being told to you in real life? And how, do, how much does loyalty mean to you? Like, how much do you value loyalty? I value loyalty a lot because, I mean, if I can't trust you, if we don't have no loyalty, what are we, what are we doing? What are we doing? <laughs> what are we doing? We're not friends. And then lies. You know, people lie to you every day. Um, <laughs> um, fake friends, family members, producers. <laughs> I'm just keeping it real. Mm. People lie to you every day. So you just got to take things with a grain of salt and you move on. Whether it's a lie or the truth, it'll come out. Or, okay. you know, if, if it ain't a lie, show me. But, I mean, now that we're we're grown, like, when I was younger, I, it probably got to me, but now it's just like, okay. You just expect, just, you know, just expect. Yeah. expect. My granddad tell me all the time, um, expect the unexpected. Okay, period. Just make sure you expect the unexpected because you never know. Shout out to granddad. Mind. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. Now my granddad, that's somebody that will show you, he hug you and tell you he love you. Now I got it from him. Yeah. I love that. My mom does that. My dad, he does that too, which makes me a real affectionate person. So, cause I'm really affectionate. Uh -huh. I will tell my friends, I love them so much. Some friends be like, ooh, I'm not that affectionate. That probably and be me. Okay. I'm a hugger. I feel like I you will hug you down, okay? Let's Kendall, I will, you lucky I ain't hug you on the carpet in Atlanta. I was like, oh my God, he seems so nice. Let me hug him. I know, I'd be like, ooh, COVID. <laughs> right, okay, period. But my friends, you know, it depends. Like, you got to show love in different ways. So I'm glad that you got to see love in different types of ways as well. Yeah. Now, yeah. something that we definitely see is MJ and just how he is as his character. Now, we know Kendall as mm -hmm. well. How much of Kendall is in MJ? Um, Maybe 30%. 
the other 70 is MJ. I don't know who that man is and why he do the things he do. Mm -hmm. um, but the punchlines and being funny and just joking, like even when Nia that's is me. down, MJ always got something funny to say. And that's me. Like if my friends down, like, bitch, I ain't got that. No, I'm just crying. Like, <laughs> what, you want to drink? What? What can I do? You want a cocktail? <laughs> what can we do? Yeah, what can we do? You want to go this far? Bye. Like, what, you want to go shopping? I ain't got time for this. Like, no, <laughs> I but probably maybe like maybe 30, maybe 20. 30%. Maybe okay. 30, 25, 30%. Yeah. Okay. I think yeah. that's good enough. Yeah. I think that's good enough. Period. Mm -hmm. Now, something that y'all both do also have a common is so you actually are a reporter for um all black with your show, which I think is like amazing social society. Yeah. Now, being a reporter and being a talent are two different spectrums. Which one do you prefer? And what is something you've learned from being an interviewer on the interviewer end? Um, which one do I like? It depends when it comes to the show, the talk show. It depends on what the topic is that day. Sometimes there's some real good ones, especially when we talk about relationships and people being like the open relationship thing. We can go, like we can go. Oh. Um, and then HBCU, that was real fun. It just depends on what the topic is. Um, okay. I like them both, just to be honest with you. I like them both um, because... With the talk show, I'm more in control. Right. I, I'm the, the captain of the ship. So it can go, it's going whatever way I want it to go. Now, some people can try to steer it, but it's my responsibility to steer that bitch back to where I want it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I guess being an interviewer, I guess, yeah, I like the fact that I'm in control and I'm running the show. Um, right. Okay. And then with acting, I really like that too because it's a character. And I can do things that Kendall wouldn't do. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> when people tweet tonight, they probably going to say some off the wall. And throughout the season, they probably going to say some off the wall shit. And they're going to be talking to me. But it's not going to get to me because it's, y'all not talking about it. It's MJ. MJ. 30% was you. The other 10% is him. Yeah, that was, that's MJ. That ain't got nothing to do with me. So whatever y'all feel, <laughs> that means I did my job. But yeah, and... I guess, did I answer your question about being an interviewer? You did. So yeah. clearly you like both. So we hear I do. Them. I do. Now, because I can do both. Something that you also mentioned on um, Social Society is you going to PWI and you wish you went to HBCU, which is something that we both have in common because I wish I would have switched it up. Now, although you're not fond of your alma mater, do you feel like it shapes you in any way, especially in your career today? Yeah, I did think for corporate, you know, corporate America mm -hmm. being in um, PWI, definitely for corporate America because you know how that goes. <laughs> we all know. Where's my Where's my drink? So I yeah, <laughs> it, it is not it's not black at all. So I was prepared, um, okay. you know, and then you never are fully prepared until you're in it, right? And then you know how you you know how to work around that, and you know what to do. So. Yeah, it did, but I just really wish I went to an HBCU. Just to which one do have? Which one would you wish you would have went to? Because mine's would have definitely been Howard. Really? Or Hampton U. Okay. That's what I can see you there. You know my ghetto ass. Um, <laughs> <laughs> my ghetto ass, probably. My eighteen-year-old self. I'll say this now. My eighteen-year-old self would have went to Jackson State because I am a okay. head. I love. Um, black marching bands and we kind of mimicked Jackson State a little bit on some things in my marching band in high school and I was a drum major so they drum hey, majors drum line. yeah they drum majors get down and I'm here for it. like that whole entertainment aspect I would have went to definitely would have went to Jackson State on the scholarship okay. band you know you would have showed out I would have showed up and showed out okay showed up and showed out baby in that all white suit with the little SpongeBob White Listen, hat. Listen, it get, pulls up. Get, okay. get, get it to me. But now, now I probably would have picked Southern University because their band is, it has nothing to do with the drum major because they're drum major. Southern, don't get mad at me, but the drum major don't do much besides do a little lean back at the beginning. But he just marched. That's all he do. He just marched. So it kind of get me born. But that band, because I would have went first to be in a band before I became a drum major. But that band, Mm, 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 mm. They so technical, and I love that. I love that you can tell that their music is very challenging. And I come from like we had a white teacher in, in high school, 
but he allowed us to bring him music and we wrote our own music. He said, if y'all want to play radio music, y'all write it. So he helped us write it. We wrote it, but he was very technical and we could run circles around the other bands when it came to like that sheet music. They can't, can't nobody mm-hmm. hold a torch against us. So I probably would have went to Southern now, but back then, Jackson State, get yeah, home. <laughs> okay. I love that. Now, Kenzo, I'm going to ask you one last question, okay? Okay. So, we are on Game School Play. Now, for Kenzo, what has been the biggest game changer moment in your career thus far? Ooh. Dang, it's two of them. Okay, give me both. One is moving from recurring to season regular on games people play because they trust me. They trusted me enough from last season that they feel like I could hold my own and actually give me more. So that was a game changer for me. And then the other game changer is, it was so funny, that towards the end of the year, people was talking about like moving to Atlanta and moving. I was like, uh-uh, I'm not moving to Atlanta. And I was like, you know what? Let me not do that. Let me not block a blessing. And I was like, I would move to Atlanta if there was an opportunity. Okay. Weeks later, I get hit with social society and they say, he got to move to Atlanta. And I said, oh, you got to be careful with the power of the tongue. Okay, the power of the tongue. <laughs> Kenzo. Uh, now I'm in Atlanta. Um, but at first it was a very hard transition because everybody know how much I love LA. I love LA like a lot. I still do to this day. But now I'm liking Atlanta because I finally let go. And it's like just just sit in your moment and enjoy this moment. Forget all the other things that's going on because that's not what you're here for. You're here on a mission and your mission is not complete. So that's my second game changer. So yeah. It's funny you said that because I keep saying to myself, going to Atlanta, move to Atlanta. And people are telling me like, oh, you should move there. And I feel like every time I say, eh, something in my career just says Atlanta. And you yeah. just was another moment that just Sweet. said it. So maybe I got to follow my dream and go to Atlanta too. I don't know. Yeah, just come on okay. to Atlanta. <laughs> I'm a cub. I, and I got a best friend over there too. I got Listen, a best friend in my head. We out here. Don't don't think I'm going everywhere though. Because I don't go everywhere. You're going to be <laughs> in the house eating some tacos. Yes, because people be by there. Hey, everybody, sometimes it's hard to go out because everybody want to talk to you. Be like, dang, I just want to. Look, look at me. I didn't turn it to Atlanta. I just want to smoke my pizza. <laughs> Kenzel. I love you so much. Okay. Thank you so Thank much you. for having me today with your media. I hope I get to see you when I am back in Atlanta, hopefully in two, three weeks. And okay. I can't wait for people to also just see you thrive as MJ on this season of games people play. Okay. Yes. Keep playing the game, baby. Thank you. I appreciate it.